I'm Simon Cooper from the Cooper Strip Club and our stripping roadshow this week is in Whangarei at the hospital and we're going to be stripping these amazing carvings on the back wall and very shortly they're going to be dismantled or removed and sent out to a carving shed so we'll take a few shots as it's happening and we'll come back to you later. Beautiful. <laughs> One of the reasons this is an ideal system for the job is when it's not invasive on the timber. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's that's cool. This pose is actually depicts Puna Harakeki. And he was chief of the Ngāti Ruangaio Hapu of Ngāpuri. This has really come alive. Nice and easy. Varnish is quite thick in parts and non existent in others. Now, one of the benefits of our stripper is that it's basically pH neutral, it's going to do no damage to the timber at all, which is really important. If you start bleaching and doing other nasty things to it, then it defeats the purpose of it all. Even the shell, the power used. It um, has no negative effect on that either. So we just keep this wet. Ooh, these spiders decide and they need to move home. But this has had about a good 10 minutes of, um, of soaking in. We've had uh, three coats of stripper. I've put a coat of stripper on top of a coat of stripper. So as the um, old varnish sort of drank it up, we put more on to keep it wet. So. Now it's nice and all our finish is quite mush, mushy. I did a little test here before and it's coming along well. So we've got our brass uh, detail brush. These are uh, uh, quite soft um, and you just lightly stroke. You don't, you're not pushing hard. One of the reasons this is an ideal system for the job is when it's not invasive on the timber. I mean, the bristles just lightly get into all those, into all the carving. All that detailing that's sort of hidden that is now coming out. Got a few birds to sing our songs. Pretty amazing. So once I've done this, I'll come back to that teeth part where the white paint's going to smear around, don't want that. You've got to be good at what you're doing to carve that. That's pretty out there. So everything's light work. You think, how would you strip this normally? Would you Try and sand it, it's been just an impossible thing. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's that's cool. So we've got 
everything off the surface. That first round of scrubbing worked really well. Then what we do is we want to get into the grain itself. Our stripper is really thin and it's, we make it thin so that it can absorb. This coat of stripper is getting into the grain itself without causing any damage. I've moved to a softer brush, copper brush. Look at this colour, this aerial through here is amazing. This is our grip embedded pad and this is an ideal product for this type of job as well. So it, the brushes have gone really well into the um, into all the grooves, all the carvings, in the direction of the grain. So going up and down that way. That can, there's been different glues used on this to try and help keep it together. You can see in the crack, there's bits of old glue in there. There's um, looks like your rare formaldehyde glue, and it's a, a gap filling glue. But still, as the wood moves, it just snaps open. So a bit of colour left is actually, I think, adding to it really, really well. That's impressive. And now we're up to the last part. This is the flushing. This is our blue flusher. It's not a neutraliser. There's nothing actually to neutralise. So I got myself a nice clean um, copper brush. So we want to just rinse away residues of the stripper, residues of um, whatever finishes we've dissolved before. And so we work our way systematically over everything. And this wet colour here, if you look at this here, that shows you what the colour of the wood will be with a new clear finish, not the gloss. Look at that colour up there. Right now, that's what you would get. So you can almost see skin and the wood grain is it's pretty awesome. So I'm going to, at any of these flatter surfaces, this is where the grip pad is ideal as it was before. So again, just in the direction of the grain, don't want cross marks. Nothing's, nothing's been harmed, all the detailing of the carving is completely intact, nothing. You don't want to, when you restore, you absolutely must not cause new damage. So you spray scrub, spray once. And this white part is really important because it gets the residues off onto a rag. Now this here is ready for a new finish no matter what you were doing, whether you were uh, polyurethaning it again, which please don't, and um, or painting, which again would be a shame. But that, that is, it gets me excited. This is pretty cool. These carvings have a, a, a story behind them that uh, I'm not going to do any justice in telling. And so the man who actually carved them is with us, Hine, and he's going to tell the story. So your turn, sir. Oh, um, this poem is actually depicts Puna Harakeki and he was chief of the Ngati Ruangayo Hapu of Ngapuri. The story goes that um, Ngati Boy was travelling through, coming through from Ruakaka and they were on their way back home and they wanted to camp, maybe spend the night um, in Whangarei at Ihio. And so, um, Te Puna Harakika's sister, Kornui, uh, married into Ngāti Wai. And she was in that expedition there, and um, they asked, Ngāti Wai asked her, as sister, to go and ask the, her brother if they could camp. Seven putiki, which are um, knots in her head, representing a hundred warriors each. 
So there's seven knots and seven warriors, 700 warriors of Mount Iwai. Um, she went up to her brother, the Punahala Keke, asked it for permission. He refused. And then a battle, a battle ensued down at Tihio. Um, Punahala Keke was killed in that battle. Um, we call this uh, a pare, which is, goes above the doorway. And um, here, which is the Kona Harakeke's sister. And um, here we have the um, Takarangi squirrels. There's two of them, one on each side. Um, and they represent the celestial realm. The Manaya, Manaya forms here represent um, the spiritual realm. And so these files represent knowledge, celestial knowledge. Um, and then you have the other the other carvings that come down the side of the doorway um, represented back here. One of them here. Yeah, there's one of them here. Which we call them Fakawai. And there's two panels and these represent um, the kaitiaki um, like tane, tangaro and all the elements have um, kaitiaki have elements of healing like the sea has healing the forest has medicine medicinal rongwa and so they represent they represent the healing uh, for the hospital. The um, knots in the hair you were talking about earlier, you've put them into the carving here. Yes. Here we have the putiki. There's four on this side and three on this side over here. Yes. So there's seven representing the 700 warriors of Ngati Wai. And we've placed whalebone heru combs in each putiki. Um, they're actually real whalebone and they've been carved and uh, painted. These are on the side representing um, the huia bird, huia tail feathers, um, yeah, representing um, chieftainship. And the um, centre panel, that's um, not a shield, that's a, a no. face, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's the face it's of Kornui. Here we have the um, Mukokowai of a, a woman. And um, so when we were carving it, the grain itself was telling us the story. And so we thought it was too precious to carve over it. And um, there's a woman, there's the this actually was bark, the bark in, in the grain, and uh, it, re but it re resembles the hair of a woman, and her face, well, she's facing that, pointing that way, and this here looks like um, a korowai, and so again, there's a this part here, it looks like the top of the bird's head and there the beak coming down, eye in there and um, the grain resembles the splayed wings of a, of a bird. Amazing. And then you'll, if you come over here, then you've got the two eyes looking at you. They look like the eyes of a, a moko or a ruru and so this, yeah, it's telling its own story. George is about to show us on this piece here. This has been um, soaked up with a stripper for a good 10 minutes and um, so as you can see it's all gone bubbly. So do your thing George. So using our brass detail brush here, we sweep in the direction here, this quick flicks right through here 
So this wall just gone soft, so they just come straight away. Who would have thought such a Kirby piece would be so quick to do? So again, the brush, scrubbing the wet stripper. All right, now we're just regular clean. We will be stripping this white paint off later. So you can use it for stripping whale bone. Yes. So we spray on the flusher. Give another quick scrub. songs of birds all day up in the rafters. Again, when it's wet like this, if you were to put a clear finish on, this would be the colour you have achieved. So where George's pour is there, you go from the black to this sort of, sort of golden charcoaly colour, which has got a real patina to it. People actually go out of their way to actually create that, so there it is. So other than the pigment, that surface is stripped clean. So you've got a clean, dry, absorbent surface, so whatever you're going to put onto it now will, will go into it. So no sanding required. So now we're spraying up this middle section. And so the trick here is to do it in a sweeping motion like a spray painter, so you get on an even spray. And this will use less stripper. So all the varnish here is fast up so far, as this is because the strip is soaked in, but now it's not looking very wet anymore. This is because it's soaked in, and so it needs more to keep going. So we'll spray some more on. So now it's time to remove the finish, and so for this it's best to use a really large spatula. You can see how soft it's going though, you can basically take it off your finger. Nice and easy. You can see that colour coming back. And so now we'll remove the stuff that's deeper in the grain. Get the things out of this detail here. And this will be getting close to being finished. So now we're going to brush out the residues that are in these deeper bits here with our copper detail brush. And so usually in most projects you would follow the direction of the grain, but in this case because it's carved it's not really possible. So you just follow the direction of the carving. And so the trick here is just going with the brush, going with the rag, and repeating if you need to. The best rags are actually really fluffy ones like bath towels, they're just great for just sinking into those grooves. And then to pull out more, just put more stripper on and just repeat. And this gets progressively cleaner and cleaner. And so now we're just scrubbing at the last remainder of the stuff here. Now we are going to be staining this black again, so I'm not too concerned if we leave slight traces, but <laughs> there isn't really much left. We have here a bath towel. Now because it's so fluffy, it's going to be fantastic for just getting right into there. And you can see it just sweeps right into those little bits in there. So it's definitely a good investment if you can grab some bath towels if you've got a project with a bit of deep details. That way you don't need to actually press your fingers into those grooves. You just merely just rub the rag over them. And that there is really. So now we just need to 
give it another scrub with the flusher and the grip pad and they'll be sorted. It's time to scrub with the grip pad. So now what we do is we just massage it with this. We're not trying to grind the thing. We're just trying to massage out the last remnants of the finish. This is the stuff that's deeper in the grain that will stop a new finish from soaking in properly. And so with this piece here, considering it as it is a rather uncarved surface, you do want to go over the direction of the grain. And when you're doing this, you do want to make sure that it's still wet as you're scrubbing. So I'm lucky in this case here because it is all still looking rather wet. But if it isn't, you want to pop some more on. That is looking good. So now we're using our blue flusher, and so the colour coated so you know which one's which. So you spray it on, similar process to the stripper. And we'll give another scrub with a clean grip pad. It's best to use clean tools when doing the flushing, as otherwise you just end up re-smearing on residues. And the purpose of this is to finish cleaning it. So we'll give it a quick scrub removing any residues of the stripper and we'll give it a rag up to take up the last of the surplus. And then once you let it flash clean, it is completely clean and you can refinish it. Nothing left to do. It's important to roll your rag as you want, so that way you don't end up re-smearing residue. There's nothing more frustrating if you have just cleaned an area and you end up swiping on a piece of black paint along the piece of timber. Of course you can always fix that, but it's best not to do it in the first place. And that is flushed. Done. Wow. Well, everything's now stripped and we've now got to prepare for our moisturizer. Uh, but before we put that on, we need to do some special colorings. The um, leafy cloak part here, we want to put some green back in. There's a lot of green tint still in the wood, which is brilliant. Um, and so we're using a spirit based stain and that way it's going to absorb right in and annually when this gets uh, its maintenance, uh, it's going to be easy to add more colour as required as the sun does its, does its thing. Spirit stains are a bit of a trick to use. They, you, they're quite fast in their uptake compared to say like an oil or a spirit or a, um, a water stain. But for this sort of job you absolutely need to use the spirit stain. Now when it's wet like this right now, that's the colour it's going to be when the new finish goes on. I'm going to afterwards get a fine brush, one of these, to get into those little um, little veins. But for now I just wanted to show you this as a bit of a, an idea of it. So, so there'll be a little bit of time to get right around, but that's no worries. And you can see it's absorbing in like this, which says the strip it wouldn't absorb like this if the stripping hadn't been done properly. The man that carved this poe is still with us, chiseling away. He's going to come and tell us um, a bit about the whole cloak. So again, um, this poe, this tupuna, is, his name is Te Tiraro Tuatahi. And he's the nephew of Ponaharaki. and found out the sad news that his uncle had been killed in battle and so he took six other warriors with him and went in pursuit of Ngāti Wai and he caught up with him at a place called Punaruku. Um, he had a 
they arranged the one-on-one with the Tikido and the best tour or warrior of Ngati Wai. Um, they had a one-on-one and um, both of them ended up in the Puna. That place, Punaruku, is named after that event where they fell in the Puna. They still carried on fighting. Um, Rangitu Kiwaho was the victor of that, of that fight with Te Tiriro. And so after the battle, because of Te Tiriro's bravery to pursue them with six warriors, um, Ngāti Wai wrapped his body in faux leaves, which you see depicted here on the plate. And then after they had wrapped him to preserve his body, they returned to Tiro to Tangitiroria to his people. And when his, his people unwrapped the leaves of his body, the imprint of the faux leaf could be seen over his on his skin, over his body. And uh, Ngati Wai said, from this day you will be called Te Panafo. Prior to that, they were known as Ngati Dua Ngayo. So there's the story there. So that cloak's all stained now. That came up really, really well. George is painting the or staining the hair black. This is a really, really um, solid black stain. These are all spirit stains, concentrates, and he's doing, you gotta be careful with these not to splash it everywhere. So it's not jinxing it, is it, George? <laughs> we'll see. And I'll be shortly mixing another stain for the other cloak, which is a brighter green. George is gonna start putting the moisturizer on about it. Uh, so we'll go for it. The, this is a very special product we've got uh, called Moisturizer. It's a blend of gum, oil and wax. All synthetic and none of the ingredients mix with water. It's a sort of like a repellent uh, for the wood, like an oil skin coat. And this is just going to bring out the grain big time. And just look at this, we've been looking forward to this. This grain is unbelievable. Anyway, the, the problem with this sort of grain is it's very fragile, it's very, um, like because there's a knot there, um, everything around it is, is, is very, very delicate and when it's outside with varnish, it's basically under hiding to nothing, there's no chance of it surviving and another five years from now, it would have, these would have opened right up and smashed, um, so this will stop that happening. So it, it feeds the wood and the actual, we're going to leave this on for, for as long as we can. We might, we might get three days out of it uh, before we've got to take it off. So it's going to feed for, um, for basically as long as possible and then we'll buff off any surplus that's left. So, and from time to time we'll come back to it with you and show you just how thirsty this centerpiece is. The, um, yeah, look at that, that's kind of so good. So, how's that looking, George? Yeah. Now you don't have to leave this stuff on all beautifully brushed out you uh, just leave it to to drink and um, and it just absorbs what it wants now from time to time we look at it if we find that any parts of it have fully absorbed it which will be all around here this will just drink it up real fast you just slap more on and you can't do too much it'll just drink what it can and then you know, buff off the surplus so what we're doing here is we're just painting this dark, it's not exactly black, it's actually a really deep blue stain to highlight all of these marks in here. And so, definitely need to be careful of course. But we're just getting this smaller brush and doing the majority of it, then we'll cut it in with a smaller brush later. And if we look on the other side, we can also we see what the father is doing on his one as well.
And by adding the blue to the black, it's a bit more like Indian ink. I just want to introduce you to uh, Kaumatua of Te Palafon Uri Toroi, and is the cultural advisor for the Northern District Health Board. This is uh, Kaumatua Tehi Tito, and he will be applying some of the moisturizer to the pump. Tuatahi 
Hakakakumia, Tokako, Anno, Mareira, Okuete, Iramutu Tane, or Tepona, Tenakui. So this facial tamoko is actually called a mataora, which means a living face. Um, this actual tamoko was taken from an actual carving of the stupana, and this carving was is now in the one of the museums in America. It was just taken um, by an, a Hungarian guy in the 1800s. So it's ended up in overseas. Uh, while I was carving this tupuna here, um, it came to our attention that he was over there. So I've taken his actual tamaku and put it on um, here and it's, it's come alive. We call our moisturiser a living finish, so let's see it happen. Let's see this, yeah. So this timber is really, really dry and it's just going to gobble up as much of this moisturiser as it can get a hold of. And over the next couple of days it's going to be fed a few more times, particularly on the end here where the end grain is. Uh, and we're going to give it all it can drink, it won't matter, you can't put too much on. And uh, in a couple of days we're going to then remove the surplus uh, with some old Telling. We'll go down to one of those Saliami stores and have a hunt for some um, old towels. I'm going to have a look myself. Absolutely amazing. And the other one was done earlier today. It was a real treat to watch that come up as well. While that's been done there, can you just pan across to the green cloak, just how great those colours have all come up. Shows you that well that it's, um, And you see the other cloak on the other pole is all... It's a slightly different green, it's a brighter green than this one here. The kōrowai on the leaves on this po here is the fo leaf from the fo tree, and the leaves on Funaharakeke are the kawakawa leaves. So they, they all have healing properties. In. The stripped colours that are, have left have created a really good effect. Better than probably. Well, two days have gone by and our trusty carving crew have been keeping the surfaces that have been absorbing it uh, wet with more moisturiser. So, um, so we're now going to take off the surplus. So I thought I'd start the, the, the ball rolling there. So I've got myself some old toweling. It's anything is fine as long as it's nice and absorbent. So first part you do is remove the surplus. We're, we're not doing too much polishing at this point. So we're just taking off if it's completely absorbed already, then you haven't given it enough moisturiser because it's effectively starved. This is still wet, which is good. It becomes mesmerising. People tend to want to stroke the timber when they've seen this. Now, what we do now is give it a, a bit of a polish. You just turn the rag onto a dry patch give it a bit of a polish because the finish 
we produce is what we call a mellow glow. It's not a shine, it's not sitting on the surface, the finish is actually in the timber itself and the when you touch the surface you're not touching a plastic coating you're actually touching timber and you can't get more real than that. We had all this amazing grain in here and that's just been evolving over the last couple of days it's just getting deeper and deeper and deeper and this is just spectacular so if you want the big towel George this will be fine it'll be fine so show us the way so it's buffing with the direction of the grain it's taking off the main surplus and then it's just easy just to buff off that last little bit and the original point where your rag's just too greasy to really work with and you just toss it grab your next one one point on the rags is you can use them, our, our um, carvers here, they're going to keep our rags because they can use them on their carvings because the, the moisturiser on the rags won't actually um, dry hard so it's going to be able to feed other woodwork. So George has nearly finished taking off the, the main bulk, the fact that there again was bulk to take off is, is good um, and then this is the just the polishing. Mm -hmm. And this is going to look absolutely spectacular when it's back up in position. Now you'll find when this is back up in position, the sun will hit it, there'll be some um, sweating we call it with a bit of moisturiser might come out, that's fine, you can buff it off if you want or just leave it. Let's look at that grain. I don't know if I said the other day but this branch here as it comes out of the tree, uh, there's a lot of weight that's below the branch etc and it causes this grain to fold. This is timber that's actually going up and down, folding, and it uh, gives this real kaleidoscope effect. It's 3D, it's, it's, it's what wood turners hunt for if a carver can't get to it first. Colours are just quite spectacular from the sort of more artificial stain varnish and paint that was on there before. This has really come alive. Leaf cloak, so I'm particularly happy with the colours, how they actually look like real foliage. And they'll buff up really well. Well, we're done. All been buffed. Having a team makes buffing way, way quicker. Uh, all the surplus has been removed and buffed away, and so they're ready now to be transported back to where they'll be standing again. And so on Tuesday morning at 5.30, the sun will reveal them back to everyone to enjoy.